so the 4680 now that you you brought that up real quick the 4680 the the so the the tweet that sort of started this conversation that we're having right now um oh by the way we're already an hour in are you still good with time <laughs> Cause, uh yeah i'm good yeah, with time yeah. okay um like how much how much more do you think uh you need like 30 minutes or i can probably go yeah i can probably go 30 more minutes you sure okay very good yeah um I, I i can go as long as you want i just i know you, you might have a busy schedule so i just want to make sure that that you're comfortable where you're at um yeah no appreciate it 30 it's cool okay uh the 3680 or the 4680 my apologies and i saw you you flashed it on the screen there for everybody to see the the tweet that started it i, I sent you a tweet and i said hey galley um I saw the interview that you and, and Jordan had, uh, Jordan Gisigi, I think that's his uh, name from The Limiting Factor, where you guys talked about the 4680 in detail, in a lot of detail. And you guys went into the, the structure, the recycling uh, capabilities, potentially long-term about not just that, but the batteries long-term. Great conversation. I highly, highly suggest everybody who hasn't seen it to check it out. But I'm sure if everybody has seen this, probably has already seen that video. But if you haven't, make sure you check it out. And then sort of, I wanted to piggyback on that because of the recent things that are going on in um, Ukraine and Russia, uh, which uh, it's horrible. Um, one of the, honestly, like I feel like for the last 10 years for our generation, like, like really our last 20 years for our generation, you know, I'm, I'm 35, you said you're 29. So we're millennials and, you know, freaking 9-11, the housing crisis, freaking the Iraq war, Afghanistan war. Then you got COVID. Now you got this freaking thing going on. It's like, it seems like nonstop crap's happening, but the, the Russia-Ukraine conflict, what it really brought to mind is it seems it seems like, uh, you know, the most important, the, the shittiest thing about this whole thing is the human life. Like human life is being lost. The Ukrainian people are suffering. The people that are being sent into the country from Russia are dying. From some of the videos we're seeing, half of them don't even know they're even supposed to be there and they're getting freaking arrested and all that stuff. But that's sort of besides the point. The... A lot of the prospects behind um, the conflict appear to be related to energy independence. So Ukraine has a ton of oil. Ukraine has a ton of natural gas. And there's, there seems to be some fear around um, Ukraine becoming a NATO nation, which then means that uh, the European, you know, Russia's borders will get much smaller. But then the European Union and NATO would have theoretically much better access to those resources, which will allow them to wane off of Russia's sort of stranglehold on oil and natural gas um, sort of in Europe and Gen Germany and other countries dependence on Russia. So like what I thought about is like, okay, so in the end, it appears that this whole freaking thing again, and this is my opinion, every, everybody's free to disagree with me, but ultimately what it appears to me is that this freaking thing again is about resource and who can get the oil and natural gas, the finite resource that we have in their power. That's what it appears to me. And then I'm like, okay, so how the frick do we get do we get off of this um, sort of continuous cycle where humans are constantly like fighting over borders and other like war interests because of energy, because of that thing that feeds humanity and, 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 and society? And I'm like, OK, so I started thinking about what are, what are the things that could help tremendously with that? And obviously renewables is a big one because renewables would allow countries to become much more self-reliant on on their own generation right you can if you have solar and wind you think that you don't have to go nearly as far to go into other countries to get their stuff or whatever but then i thought about the 4680 and the 4680 appears to be that holy grail which you've talked about many times that it's this holy grail technology almost that is going to allow us to achieve so much as a society and then within the context of like conflict between human beings and this is really what i want to ask you how do you think the 4680 is going to play, say, you know, 50, 100 years down the road when it comes to lessening conflicts in the world and wars that are mostly around oil and natural gas and, the, and having control over that? Have you thought about that? I would love to hear your thoughts about that. Wow. Yeah. And it's kind of, um, I, I agree so much. And it's like crazy that we're in a dark time and that makes us realize the value of this technology. and. Obviously, I want to say I stand with Ukraine, and I'm just like, I can't believe that that's happening. Um, but yeah, like, you know, I think scarcity is the a root of a lot of human issues. And then greed is like this emotion that manifests because of scarcity. And so that is why you have all these political powers fighting for these resources greedily because they're worried of their scarcity. And so this is just, to me, the 4680 is just energy abundance. And the idea that like, we can have cheaper, more energy that's 
done on site that you're in control of. Like it's almost like your own sovereignty as an individual, if you have your own ability to get energy. And I think we're realizing that more and more. And so I'm a big believer in hyper change. And like, this is to me such an interesting example of like, we have the tech solutions, but we need to distribute these quickly and spread the word about them. And like, that's why I'm kind of obsessed with batteries and spent years of my life trying to predict that Tesla, like, like, will Tesla bring this in house? Will they create the battery skunk works? Will they accelerate this like trend of battery cost declines that will create the inflection point that gets us off fossil fuels? Like it's so, so important. I think technology is the only way out out of so many of these problems. Like like if we want to think about how do we have 50 billion humans, we need to under re, reinvent the underpinnings of how we all live. And, um, this conflict, like, yeah, like I, I just, we, what fossil fuels are clearly, um, extremely intertwined with war and a catalyst for war and, it, and, yeah. So I, I I don't know. I almost don't want to comment too much on it because I just like know nothing about it and I'm sure. just kind of like so depressed about it. But I just think we need if that doesn't wake you up to like why I'm so obsessed with Tesla and why I thought that this was worth dedicating my life to because we need this technology because otherwise we're stuck in this world that's just going to keep getting uglier and uglier. And like we need to we need to have a way out. And this is our hope. This is to me hope. And so, um, yeah, I just like. It's only reinforced how dope the 4680 is, yeah. which is crazy to me that I thought it could, it, I didn't think it would be any more important than I already thought it was. But now it's like, holy shit, like this matters. Yeah. Um, no, I appreciate that. Do, do you think, do you think when Elon's crafting these technologies, like, do you see him thinking like within that context as well about how the technology that he's building could potentially not only lead to less reliance on, on fossil fuels and a finite resource, but to actually lessening global conflict, which will help humanity survive longer? Like, do you think that's part of his thought process? Probably, like, I think, yes, he understands that, but also no, not at all, because it's just physics. Mm. And it's just like, to him, it's like, yeah, like there's gonna be a gazillion consequences that suck if we stay with fossil fuels and keep those inefficiencies and scarcities in society. Mm. So let's reduce that scarcity and increase abundance as rapidly as possible. And then that will decrease all of this negative sentiment. And like, whether you want to say it's war, or geopolitical, this, like, like he's probably thinking about that, but that's all kind of derivative effects off of this first law of like, how do we get the cheapest, most sustainable energy? Got it. No, that makes a ton of sense. Um,